Hi there. Welcome to the CBT Nuggets Micro Nugget entitled Setting Up a Free iSCSI SAN. I'm Tim Warner. Before I show you the click through procedure, I think it's important to briefly explain our terms, specifically, what the heck is a storage area network or a SAN? A SAN, my friends, for those who don't know, is a block and network based storage technology. It's used extensively nowadays for clusters, for failover clusters, and enabling high availability for applications and services. It provides a way to centrally manage storage and keep it separate from your virtual or physical server hardware. The thing that differentiates a storage area network or SAN from a network attached storage or NAS device is that SANs operate at the block level, so at a really extremely low level close to the actual disk cluster, whereas opposed a NAS device uses upper level protocols like server message block and works at the file or shared file level. Our second term to consider is iSCSI. With storage area networking, the two major players in town are Fiber Channel and iSCSI. iSCSI is cool because it's cost effective. It operates over traditional Ethernet, so you don't need to kit your servers with dedicated host bus adapter cards. You don't need separate cabling or switches. It runs over Ethernet. Now, this micro nugget is focused on software based iSCSI SAN servers. The question comes up, are these ready for prime time? Can you consider using these in your production environment? That's actually another topic for another time. I'm presenting these as options for your testing, your development, and your study as you use our CBT Nuggets training products to prepare for your Microsoft certification exams, your storage certification exams, or just in practice if you're administering a SAN or considering that. Windows Server 2012 now includes a free iSCSI server as a feature. There's also plenty of third-party support. The two products that I'm personally familiar with and recommend are FreeNAS and StarWind Software. FreeNAS is free, you can't beat the price. StarWind Software Solutions, they do have a free version. Their higher level products are available as free 30-day evaluations, but you're going to have to pay for licenses if you want to use them for keeps. Once we set up an iSCSI shared volume, the technical term for that is target, we have to make a client connection to that iSCSI target. And in Windows, we use a control panel utility called the iSCSI initiator. Now our time is really at a premium here in these micro nuggets. So let's hop right in and I'll show you how to use the StarWind software tool. Now I've gone to the StarWind website and downloaded an evaluation version of their iSCSI SAN and NAS software. And I've actually installed it. It's a very simple, uninteresting installation. The installer is small. It's got a small footprint. We use a Windows tool called the StarWind Management Console to get up and running. iSCSI operates over TCP 3260, 3261. The server is loaded in by default. I can right click and connect to that server. This opens the iSCSI SAN software specifically. And then to start building out a target, for shared storage, we can, you guessed it, right click the target node and add a target to the list. I will call this micro nugget. The way that iSCSI is addressed on the client side is what's called the logical unit number or LUN. That's what this long honking unique name is. I'm going to leave that alone. And if we're going to enable this for clustering, we'll want to allow multiple concurrent iSCSI connections. It's a good idea anyway. That's literally all there is to creating the target. Wasn't that fast? <laughs> no doubt. We're not, we're, we're not concerned with physical iSCSI disk arrays here. This is all going to be done virtually for testing environments. Next, we go to devices. This is the actual storage, and you can create this virtually, believe it or not. Now, many different ways to go. We can right-click the devices node and select Add Device, but what I like to do is stay in the targets area, right-click your target, and add a new device to the target. Look at all these options here. I'm going to connect a virtual hard disk that is an image file device. If you've worked with virtualization, you're very familiar with image files. Heck, even if you've used ISO image files, it's the same basic idea. We're going to create a new virtual disk as the target. I'm going to call this micro nugget. I'll make it very small, one gig. Click next and we get an error. It's because I forgot to specify a location. Let's hit browse. I'll go to C, 
iSCSI, that's a folder I created, and again I'll call this micronugget.img. It's going to be an IMG binary image file. That's all there is to it. Now, of course, in practice, would I store the target on the same server as the client? No, not unless you're absolutely constrained for development space. It verifies the path. I'll click Next. I'll leave the caching options at their default and finish through the wizard. All there is to it. Now let's switch over to another machine. I'm on HV Nugget 3 and let's make a client connection to that iSCSI storage. To do that we need a tool called the iSCSI Initiator. We can get to that through Control Panel or on a server box. We can go through Server Manager, Tools, iSCSI Initiator. I'm going to put the IP address of my target box in and hit Quick Connect. It gives me a list of all LUNs advertised by that server. Here's the micro nugget one I created. It's got a status of inactive, but I'm going to connect to change that status to connect it. I'll click Done. Next, we come over to Volumes and Devices and simply hit Auto Configure. Now, don't worry about all this extra stuff you're seeing here. That's just simply a function of other iSCSI connections, and I have failover clustering going on on the server. Final thing is we'll open up the Disk Management Console, diskmgmt.msc, if you want to open up the MMC console directly, and we will see that new device connected up right here. It'll show up as an unknown disk. We can right-click, bring it online, then we'll right-click to initialize the disk. We can choose MBR or GUID partition table, depending upon how your system is set up. And once the disk comes up as online, we can start the volume creation process just like you do with locally attached storage. Give it a drive letter, give it a volume name, give it a file system. With Windows Server 2012, we have the resilient file system as an option, though I'll leave NTFS. Finish. And there we have it. We've got new connection to shared storage. Easy as that. I hope that this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.